Again, I comment, it is so wonderful to read Holy Scripture. We are studying <coughs> the Gospel of Mark, and this uh, section is on Jesus calming the storm. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. And I pray <coughs> that you may read, read this Holy Scripture. It is one of the most amazing miracles that Jesus performed. Last time we, uh, we saw uh, what we needed to do as far as our evangelism was concerned. The, the uh, light on the stand in that parable that what was hidden would be revealed what was concealed would be coming out into the open and it's actually referring to our ministry our evangelism is it in the open <clears throat> and now a wonderful wonderful truth about Jesus calming the storm in Mark's gospel everything as we've said before right at the beginning is immediate and at once. Every event actually happened. And we remember those events. I love to reflect back on uh, the truths of Jesus and the wonderful miracles he performed. In Mark 1.40, the leper. If you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus said, I, I am willing clean in chapter 2 verse 5 the paralytic sons your son your well it was sons actually there's more than the one son your sins are forgiven and in 2 6 we see the pharisees thinking why, why is jesus blaspheming why is he blaspheming when it turns out that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were blaspheming. Remember Mark chapter 3 verse 29 about the Holy Spirit. Please read that. And in 2.6 the Pharisees were thinking why Jesus was blaspheming. And in 2.8 Jesus knew. Jesus knew their thinking. And do you know that he knows your thinking? He knows your thinking. That's why we're studying this wonderful passage. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. The calming of the storm. And <clears throat> when we get to uh, Mark 13, especially Mark 13, verse 23, Jesus actually says, I've told you everything ahead of time. He knew everything that was going to happen ahead of time. He knows in your life right now what is happening and what will happen ahead of time. It's why we remember Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me. You know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts my going out, my lying down, all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. Search me, Lord. Know my heart. Know if I've got a softened, loving, obedient, repentant heart. Is your heart like that? Softened, repentant, obedient, And then the psalm says, And lead me in your way everlasting. I pray that you'll read Mark 4, 35 to 37. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let's go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind them, they took him along 
just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. <clears throat> a furious, a furious squall came up and waves broke over the boat so that it was almost swamped, almost swamped. When we get concerned and we need rest in Jesus' peace, do we have Jesus' peace? Are we praying for Jesus' peace? Are you praying for Jesus' peace in your life? We all become on edge at at times and we have storms and troubles in our life. This truth is about an actual storm. And uh, it's in the Sea of Galilee. Now the Sea of Galilee is about 8 miles wide and 13 miles long. (coughs) Which in metric is 12 kilometres wide and about 20 kilometres long. And a huge waves and a strong wind blew up. And Jesus, we remember from this wonderful parable, this wonderful truth, Jesus is Lord over physical and spiritual life. Jesus is Lord over all creation. Jesus is God. Remember John 10.30, I and the Father are one. And remember about the the above, John 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word. (coughs) Through him all things were made. And nothing was made without him. In Colossians 1, 15, we read that uh, Paul recorded Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And by him all things were created, things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, thrones, powers, rulers, authority, all things created by him and for him. Jesus is before all things and in him all things hold together. And we see this right from the beginning of the Bible. In Genesis 1 verse 1, a comment on the Trinity. In the beginning God, Elohim, plural, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, created, singular, bara, created as a unity the Trinity. And Jesus there is right in the middle of it. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, the eternal second person of the Trinity. Right at the beginning of time. Jesus is God. Please read John 10.30. I and the Father are one. And in Mark 4.36 the disciples obeyed Jesus they took him in the boat and they were told that they were going over to the other side in Mark 4.35 Jesus said let's go over to the other side and notice that Jesus rested he was at peace he was tired he needed rest when he was resting on a cushion and he was going over to the other side Jesus is in the will of his father and we remember I love that passage I know that I I refer to a lot of scripture but it's all in context with everything that Jesus is doing John 15 9 onwards Jesus said As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. 
If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. This is so important, to remain in the Father's love. Are you in the Father's love? In Matthew 26, verse 39, Jesus said, This is awesome. Before he was crucified, Jesus said, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not my will, but your will. Jesus was always in the will of his Father. And for you and me, are you always in the will of our Heavenly Father? I know that I make dreadful mistakes, but I repent and ask, Lord, Father, forgive me. It's in the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Forgive me my sins, my trespasses, as I forgive others. It's all to do with that wonderful beatitude. Blessed are those, blessed are the merciful, and they'll be shown mercy. The Father is merciful to me. I pray that he's merciful to you. Because mercy triumphs over judgment. When storms and trials come, are you at rest? Are you at peace? Are you you at will in your Father in heaven, your heavenly Father? God's peace is not an absence of trouble. We're all going to face trouble and worries and anxieties. God's peace is not an absence of trouble. But in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the anxieties and and all of the things that are going wrong, he is our peace. He gives us his peace. He gives us rest in our hearts when we're in him. He gives us rest in the midst of peace because we are in his peace through the Holy Spirit who helps us. We have freedom. We have freedom when we trust Jesus. You'll be free. Remember that wonderful passage, John 8, 32 and 36. If the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Free, at rest, at peace, in the will of our Father, because we have trusted him. We have faith in him and in his Son, and in his everlasting arms. In Mark 4.38, the disciples were anxious and frightened, 38 says, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And he's talking about all of them. I wonder if he's talking about the other boats that were with them. And the disciples were angry with Jesus because they considered that Jesus wasn't caring. And in 440, verse 40, Jesus said, Why are you so afraid? You still have no faith? That is faith in believing? Do do you really believe in me or, or not? The point of Jesus' teaching is about peace to those who are disturbed. And he's on his way. He's on his way to see uh, another to perform another miracle about someone who was totally disturbed physically and spiritually are you disturbed 
physically and spiritually? Are you at peace? Needing rest? Needing peace in Jesus? Jesus was there in the Old Covenant. He's right through. He's concealed in the Old Covenant, revealed in his New Covenant. In Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, the teacher records, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. He will make your paths straight. And we always have our paths straight when we have sound doctrine, believe in sound doctrine. Not not postmodern existential liberalism, which is leading into heresy and apostasy. No. He'll make your your path straight. True doctrine, sound doctrine. And he calms us. He gives us peace and calm. In Matthew 11, uh, 28, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. From gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest. You'll find peace. You'll find peace, not only now, but eternally, for your souls. In Mark 41, the, we, we learn the disciples were terrified <clears throat> when he told the wind and the waves to, to stop. Who is this? Who is this? That the wind and the waves obey him. And the only answer that we can come up with from Holy Scripture is the very amazing, glorious Son of God. Jesus is God. Again, John 10.30. Jesus is the eternal second person of Yahweh. And this is God's presence in this wonderful truth we're reading. And the power demonstrated like the truth when he even concealed did something amazing in Psalm 107 verse 25 onwards. The Lord spoke and stirred up the tempest and they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and the Lord brought them out of their distress just as he's done in his new covenant. He stilled the storm to a whisper and the waves of the sea were hushed. In this miracle with Jesus, all arrived safely. Jesus is faithful. He was faithful then, he's faithful now. And he was in the will of his Father. This is a great encouragement to us. May I encourage you to read the Lord's Prayer every morning. Our Father in heaven, may your name be praised. Your kingdom, your rule in my softened heart be there all day. Your will be done. It says on earth is in heaven. But your will be done in my softened heart. May I always be in your will. What a great encouragement to us. Remember Mark 13, 23. Jesus has told us everything ahead of time. And he told the disciples that. He said, we're going over to the other side of the lake. And he went over to the other side of the lake because he had another miracle to perform, as we'll see in the next study. 
and a great encouragement through us, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, to remain in the will of the Father. It's why Paul wrote Ephesians 2.10 that, that God has prepared things for you to do and he's done it in advance. Please read Ephesians 2.10 because we are faithful followers of our Saviour and our Lord. Jesus who died and rose and who saves those who trust him. John 3.16 Jesus is God. Jesus is Lord and Saviour. Jesus is all compassion. Jesus is our eternal hope. Jesus' mercy is everlasting. Jesus' love is changeless. Jesus' word is the sword of the Spirit. Jesus' grace is sufficient. Jesus' burden is light and his yoke is easy. Jesus is the centrepiece of our Christian civilization. And we pray that this will be realized by Christians. Jesus is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. Jesus is all wisdom, our peace, our righteousness and our salvation, our holiness. Jesus is the fundamental doctrine in theology. There is no place for postmodern liberal existential heresy. You cannot outlive him. You cannot live without him. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus is King of glory. Jesus is Prince of peace. And what Luke wrote in his second gospel, the Acts of the Apostles, is absolutely true. In Acts 4.12 Salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven by which you are saved. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. In this next study of Mark, we are studying Mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 20. And I would ask you, and please read it, Read Holy Scripture. I love reading Holy Scripture every morning. Mark 5, 1 to 20. And Romans 8. Romans 8. Verse 28 to 30. Well, last time when we uh, looked at the coming of the storm, I, I mentioned some verses and I will mention verses again. Remember John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. By trusting him we will have life everlasting. And Mark 1.15, The time has come, the kingdom of God is near, the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent. Repent and believe the good news, the gospel. And I reflecting at the moment in my mind through the Holy Spirit, Mark 1.24 The evil spirit Devil in the detail What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? We know who you are The Holy One of God And I've mentioned before for your reference that that's recorded in Isaiah 41, verses 14, 16 and 20. And we remember from the Beatitudes, which we've looked at, the Beatitudes, well, we may look at them, um, so many things to look at in Holy Scripture, but the Beatitude, blessed are those who mourn, they will be comforted. And so it, it reflects on a similar truth that Jesus cares 
for a person, a person whom he was going to see, a person in turmoil, deep sorrow, trauma, troubled, burdened, distressed, depressed and grieving. Mourning, mourning the loss of his physical and spiritual life. And it's all about the healing of legion. That wasn't his name. But the Roman legion had 6,000 troops and this man had 6,000 demons. He was possessed by demons, a demon and demons. In Mark 5, 1 to 5, Jesus and his disciples go to the southeast area of the Sea of Galilee, an area called Gadara of the Gerasenes. It's where the Gentiles lived. And even from the moment that Jesus was talking about lamps on a stand and don't hide your light, Jesus was not going to hide his light because he's the light of the world. He was actually going to do something, to do a miracle. And it follows the, th the theme of the calming of the storm and storms in our lives. And we see two storms in Legion's life. We see physical trauma, external restraint. Look, look at the passage. The external restraint had failed. Satan had robbed him of self-control, destroyed his relationships in his home life with friends and, and community. And Satan tries to do that with you and me. Satan tries to do that with you and me. It's why we need to be merciful and kind and loving in our attitudes. And he was shunned. Legion was shunned. He was rejected by society. And there are many people today who are rejected by society. They're the people that we mentioned a couple of studies ago that we need to pray for them. And mention them in prayer. And stand beside them and let Jesus stand beside them and soften those hard hearts, those hearts that are in pain, and save them for eternity. Our life in this wonderful life is short. And Legion had spiritual trauma. He had inner trauma. He had terrible fears, he had pain, he had frustration, confusion and those seven primary negative emotions that I've mentioned a few times in our studies. Helplessness, hopelessness, worthlessness, loneliness, sadness, fear and painful hurt. And that uh, that's for men and women today. Men and women today are... Uh, under all these stresses, the stresses of life, the anxieties and the troubles. They all show, but they all reveal Satan's total evil in our lives. And this man, this man Legion, he was robbed of his sanity. And the worst part of it, he was forced, forced to fear eternal judgment. He is in need of love and care and peace and rest, both physical and spiritual. And society was unable to help or to change him. And today, only Jesus can do that for you and me. Has he done it for you and me? We get told, you know, as far as chaplaincy goes in schools and everywhere else, 
that we need more psychologists and more psychiatrists. Many people today say society needs more psychologists and psychiatrists. No. We need Jesus. We need to understand that Jesus is there for us. He's there for you and me. He's there for all. It's all to do with simple belief in South do- in sound doctrine. And if you want to look at that in terms of the Holy Spirit's guidance in holy faith, please read Jude verses 20 and 21. And Paul, again, we've mentioned this when he wrote to the people in Philippi in chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. I I mention it again. It's so important to read Holy Scripture again and again. He says not to be anxious. And he could have been anxious. In a couple of weeks' time, Nero was going to behead him. He was chained to a guard. But he wrote to the people in Philippi, Philippians 4, 4 4-7. Don't be anxious, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known. And the peace of God, the rest of God, the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Jesus and what he can do in your life which is wisdom, his wisdom. I mean, 1 Corinthians 1.30, Jesus is our wisdom, that is, our holiness, our righteousness, and our salvation. And then the, uh, in, in Mark 5, 6, and 7, and he saw Jesus, this is a legion, saw Jesus at a distance and ran and fell, at his, fell on his knees in front of Jesus and he shouted out at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? The, the uh, demon was controlling his voice. Swear to God, you won't torture me. Swear to God you won't torture me. The, the demon who, who was working, uh, working through uh, Legion's voice knew, knew Jesus' name. He knew Jesus' name. That Philippians 2 passage. But the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The demons knew this. And note the irony in that statement. Swear to God, the demon said. But Jesus is God. The demons are destroying the divine likeness of which man was created and in which man was created. Created in the image of God. Man and woman made in God's image. Jesus would save Legion like Jesus saved Lazarus. Remember Lazarus was in a tomb for four days. And yet Jesus said to Lazarus, come out. Can you imagine the awesome power of Jesus? The awesome power over nature. I was told by a, 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 min, a, a doctor, a pathologist, there are over 300,000 subsystems in the human body And when Jesus said to Lazarus, come out, every single one of those, the blood supply, the brain, everything was working perfectly. And Lazarus came out. What kind of power is that? And this is the power 
of Jesus, the Son of God. And Legion was healed. Legion was healed physically. He was healed physically and spiritually. He was saved eternally. The Greek word is sophron. Sophron. Saved eternally in Jesus. And returned to his right senses, to his right mind. He was made new. And today so many, so many need, need to be made new. To be made new in the attitude of their minds by trusting Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22. Jesus put off Legion's old self and made him new in the attitude of his mind. And many need this today. Just as the uh, messianic promise in the old covenant prophesied about Jesus. In Isaiah 61 verse 1 which we've studied. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. It's about Jesus. The Lord anointed me. And that, that word anointed, it's, it's the Greek word creo, meaning Christ. The anointed one. The Lord anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, the free captives, to release from darkness, that is blindness and, and spiritual spiritual blindness. The prisoners, which is legion. He was a prisoner, prisoner in his body and a prisoner prisoner in his spirit. And to proclaim the Lord's favour to comfort those who mourn and are grieving and to bestow on them crowns of beauty, not ashes. Jesus said in uh, John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, in physical and spiritual darkness, but have the light of life. And in Matthew 5, 11 to 13, the demons made a request not to send them out of the area, but to, to put them among the pigs. And Jesus gave permission. That request was granted. And there were about 2,000 pigs. And tradition uh, suggests that uh, the Jews were selling the pigs because they were unclean. They couldn't eat them. Uh, they were selling them to the Gentiles. And they, those pigs were destroyed, as we read. And in Mark 5, 15 to 20, Legion now is unburdened in his right mind. And the people were afraid. And they, they were saying, who is this? Who is this Jesus who has healed him? They, they were amazed. As as we mentioned in, in Mark 1, 22, the man with the, uh, the evil spirit, they, they were amazed. And the people made a request. Jesus, leave. They pleaded with Jesus to leave. And Jesus granted their request. How sad is that? that Jesus left. Jesus left. You know, when those people got to the end of their lives, the first person you stand in front of in eternity is Jesus to receive either the well done, good and faithful servant or depart from me. They requested Jesus to depart from them. That is so sad. Today people need Jesus. John 3.16 And then Legion made a request to go with Jesus, but it wasn't granted. 
And Jesus said to him, Go home. Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. Do you reflect each day how much the Lord is doing for you? Even through the difficult times? Jesus said you're going to the the capitalists, the ten cities. I'm amazed. I'm amazed as I, I reflect on the timing of Jesus' visit to this region and to Legion, to this area of the Gentiles. And I've said it before three times that I believe that Jesus planned this visit at the time he told the parable about the lamp on a stand. Mark 4.21 Do you put a lamp under a bowl? Whatever is hidden is disclosed and whatever is concealed is brought out into the open. And he did this by giving Legion his correct new attitude of mind. And a ministry, a ministry of evangelism Legion's light was not under a bowl anymore. He had this ministry of evangelism to ten cities. <coughs> Tell these people they need Jesus. Romans eight twenty eight to thirty. And we know that in all things God works for the good. Those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Jesus has a purpose for you and me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.